Any regular connoisseur of barbershop music knows that overtones exist and can be heard. Don't believe me? Listen for yourself. There are four people singing in this clip, but count the notes you hear in the last chord. There are five. Love it, This is just one example of overtones, and they don't only happen with a four-part chord. They can be heard with two parts, and three as well. Take this interval, for example. Did you hear it? This is the note you're listening for. Now try listening again. Did you hear it that time? A system of two, like this one, is simplest. So let's look at that. To start, let's remind ourselves how a linear system works. With each frequency you put in, you get the same frequency out, although the amplitudes may be different. Does it matter how fast the frequency is or how slow? It's the same concept. Frequency in equals frequency out. Now, if you put in two driving frequencies, for example, F1 and F2, when, you, when they come out, all you get is a linear combination, or, in mathematical terms, a superposition. A nonlinear system is different, however. When you put in two different input frequencies, like what we're dealing with, what you get is the original F1 and F2, but you also get extra harmonics, like 2F1, 3F1, etc. Now the ear is nonlinear and it behaves as follows. With one input, we have an equation of mx double dot plus k1x plus k2x squared equals f cosine omega drive t, which is our input. Our first guess will be x equals a cosine omega drive t. Since the squared term gives us the harmonics, we'll look at the result from that. We will get an a squared cosine squared omega drive t, which will give us a cosine 2 omega drive t result. Our next guess is x equals a1 cosine omega drive t plus a2 cosine 2 omega drive t. Looking once again at the squared term, we get results like cosine omega drive t times cosine 2 omega drive t, cosine squared omega drive t, and cosine squared 2 omega drive t. These all produce harmonics. We have cosine 3 omega drive t, which is our sum term, and cosine 1 omega drive t, our difference term. We also have cosine 2 omega drive t, 
and cosine 4 omega drive t. So, not only do we get the simple omega drive and 2 omega drive that we put in, we also get terms like 3 omega drive and 4 omega drive and so forth. But remember, we're looking at a two-part harmony. So we'll have two inputs, which means our equation looks as follows. mx double dot plus k1x plus k2x squared equals f1 cosine omega 1t plus f2 cosine omega 2t. Our first guess is going to be x equals a1 cosine omega 1t plus A2 cosine omega 2t. Now since the squared term gives us our harmonics, we will once again look at the results from that. This gives us terms like cosine squared omega 1t, cosine squared omega 2t, and cosine omega 1t times cosine omega 2t. Each of these gives us harmonics. This first term gives us a 2 omega 1. The second term gives us a 2 omega 2. And this last term gives us an omega 1 plus omega 2 and omega 1 minus omega 2. Our second guess is going to be x equals a1 cosine omega 1t plus a2 cosine omega 2t plus a3 cosine 2 omega 1t plus a4 cosine 2 omega 2t. In addition to these first set of harmonics, we get harmonics like these. 2 omega 1 plus omega 2, 2 omega 1 minus omega 2, 2 omega 2 plus omega 1, 2 omega 2 minus omega 1, and so on and so forth. Now our two inputs in this case are a perfect fifth apart, which corresponds to inputs of omega 1 and 1.5 omega 1. Which, if you remember all of the harmonics that we just looked at, we get combinations like this. Omega 1, 2 omega 1, 3 omega 1. We also have 1 and a half omega 1, and another 3 omega 1. We also have terms combining these two, like 0.5 omega 1, 2.5 omega 1, and so on and so forth. This is the piece that's really interesting. There is more than one way to make a 3 omega 1, and that is the overtone that we are looking for in the, in the following experiment. This first pitch is a sine wave at 500 hertz. This next pitch is a sine wave at 750 hertz. If you can hear an overtone, it will be this next pitch, 1500 hertz. Play the two sine waves together, one at 500 hertz and one at 750 hertz, and it sounds like this. And remember, you're listening for this overtone. Can you hear it? If you couldn't hear the overtone just then, don't worry too much about it. It is incredibly difficult to hear. These power spectra should reveal why. This first power spectrum is for the sine wave at 500 hertz. Note how there is one peak, and only one peak. 
This next power spectrum is for the sine wave at 750 hertz. Note how once again there is one peak, and only one peak. This third power spectrum shows the two pitches played together. There are only two peaks, which is exactly what we expect. These pitches only get harmonics in the ear because they are pure sine waves, which is exactly why I said don't worry about hearing the overtone. It is literally all in your head. The human voice does not produce a simple sine wave, so we will use the square wave to more closely approximate a sound like what the human voice would make, which contains additional harmonics. This first pitch is a square wave at 500 hertz. This next pitch is a square wave at 750 hertz. The overtone that you can hear is going to be the same pitch of 1500 hertz. Play the two square waves together, one at 500 hertz and one at 750 hertz, and it sounds like this. Remember, you're listening for this overtone. Can you hear it? If you can hear the overtone, great! If not, I encourage you to go back and listen again. These power spectra reveal why I think the overtone is easier to hear with a square wave. This first power spectrum is a square wave at 500 hertz. Note all the harmonics, which are present here, but were not for the sine wave. And remember, all of these harmonics are part of the input. The second power spectrum is of a square wave at 750 hertz. Note how there are once again harmonics that are part of the input. This last power spectrum is the two pitches together. Not only do we see the peaks at each pitch, but we see all the other harmonics as well, including the one at 1500 hertz, the overtone we are listening for. This, plus the fact that the overtone is much louder for the square wave set than the sine wave set, leads me to this hypothesis. While the nonlinearity in the ear allows you to hear the overtone pitch, the harmonics present allow it to be heard with the same volume as the other pitches, as is desired in the barbershop sound.